Okay, good evening everybody and welcome to the Now Teach Career Change webinar. Uh, my name's Talia and I'm the Career Change Lead here at Now Teach. And behind the scenes we've got Jo, who's doing our tech and keeping everything running smoothly. And I also have the rest of the team here um, of our, our team of Career Change Specialists and they are behind the scenes ready to answer questions as they come up in the Q&A box. So we're all part of the team here at Now Teach and I'm really pleased to be here talking to all of you. And we'll all hear from our guest speaker, Darren, in a minute. Um, he will introduce himself properly um, in a few minutes. Um, so also on the panel with me, I've got Carl, and he is from the team here at Now Teach Two, And um, he's part of the team that runs our programme. And he'll be here at the end to take questions on what it's like to be part of Now Teach and how we are working hard to support career changes in what's a really big shift in their working lives. Uh, so at Now Teach, we're here to support you through this whole process um, wherever it is that you are in that process so I've got lots of expertise on hand today and in the coming weeks and months to make sure a transition in career is as smooth and as informed as possible um, so to make sure that we can answer all of your burning questions um, please type them into the zoom Q&A tab so to just to avoid any confusion this is the box label Q&A it's not the box label chat and our team are on hand and um, to answer your queries um, We'll answer some of these in the Q&A box and we'll put some to myself, uh, Darren and Carl, um, at the end of this um, webinar. Um, so we'd also love to know a bit more about you and what you want to hear about. So um, can you just complete the poll? It's going to pop up. So I'm just going to leave that on the screen for about 20 seconds. Okay, so uh, today's event is all about how Now Teach can support you through your career change. And Now Teach, we want to see a world where children benefit because talented people who already have successful careers become teachers and bring their skills and experiences to the schools that need them most. So to do that, we attract and recruit experienced people to change career into teaching in state schools. Uh, we support now teachers, training providers, schools, and the whole uh, wider education system to realize the full potential of career changes in education. So we won't be able to cover every aspect of this today, um, but we will, uh, we, but we do have an hour, uh, so we'll be able to tack the kind of key bits and pieces and delve a bit deeper into the process. So there's no better way to learn about what it is to be an our teacher than to hear directly from the cohort themselves. I spent 30 years as a marketer. I was a journalist and an author. I was an investment banker. I'd had a catering business for almost 30 years. I've had a military career and then worked in consulting, and then I went into teaching. I really felt like, OK, I've got like 10, 15 years left of working. What should I do that makes me feel like I want to get out of bed every morning? I found the retirement decision was a difficult decision to make. I wanted to give back. I wanted a challenge. It's never too late to change careers. It's never too late to do something new. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. My husband said, oh, at last, because I'd been talking about it for years. People telling me, you're really courageous, which I think in Britain is code for you're crazy. <laughs> The thing about us as career changers is you're bringing to the school environment a unique set of experiences that can only be valuable to their children. Everybody's starting from scratch. Every month you look back and feel, God, I've got a little bit better. The kids are hilarious. They really are very funny. I feel fully alive. I have purpose. It's the most rejuvenating thing I could possibly imagine doing. I can see the impact that I make on a day-to-day -day basis, knowing that I'm helping these kids prepare themselves for the future. So a really special thanks to the now teachers who gave up their time to make that film. And I'm sure you'll agree that it's really valuable to hear from people who are in the network. 
So next, I'm going to play you a message from one of our co-founders, Lucy Kellaway. Uh, Lucy herself uh, was a career changer and really understands the unique benefits and the challenges of career changing. Hello, I'm Lucy Kellaway. I'm the co-founder of Now Teach. Um, I'm delighted to welcome you today. Really pleased that you are interested, possibly, in becoming a teacher. Uh, I set up this organisation together with Katie Wargrave four years ago because I suspected that there were people, maybe like you, and definitely like me back then, who were tired of their old careers and who wanted to do something more useful with their lives. Um, it seemed to me that there was this huge waste of talent of people who had lots of experience of the world in general and wanted to become teachers, but nobody was helping them. Nobody was saying, yes, you know, the pr profession needs people like us and here's how you do it. So that was four years ago. Uh, I am now, I have now been teaching myself for four years. Uh, look, it's been hard. Uh, everybody said to me at the time, this will be the hardest thing you've ever done. Uh, I didn't believe them, but my goodness, they were right. But it was also, you know, if I wanted to do something useful, which I did, nothing could be more useful than this. Every single day that you're a teacher, even on a bad day, you leave school knowing that children know something that they didn't know that very morning and that was because of the effort that you have made. So what could be more rewarding than that? Um, teaching isn't for everybody. Of course I know that. Um, and maybe you're wondering whether it's for you. Well, I mean, the only ultimate test is sort of try it and see, but I can give you a couple of pointers because obviously we don't want loads of people who are going to start doing it who then drop out. But I think there are two really important motivations. And if you have both of them, then this really might be right for you. The first one is that you yourself want to learn something new. You want to push yourself. You want the challenge of this. And that's a sort of selfish motivation, but my goodness, it will help you in the dark days in the January of your first year. But the other motivation is just as important. Um, you need to want to do this for the sake of your students. If you have both of those, this really might be for you. But there are a couple of extra things too. You will be surrounded by teenagers uh, all day long. If that doesn't excite you, then it's been very nice to meet you, but goodbye. Um, equally, you need to want to spend all day thinking about the subject that you're going to teach. You need to find it really interesting because if you're not interested in it neither will they be lots of other people will will, will talk to you um, as you go through this about what we can offer but but in the end we will help you find the right um teacher training pro program for you and in the end we offer you each other we all want to do the same thing we all want to become better teachers and nothing makes me as co-founder happier than that you are out there watching this video thinking maybe teaching will be the right thing for you i hope it really is and i hope to meet you one day So as I mentioned previously, uh, that was Lucy and she is one of our co-founders. So thank you, Lucy, for recording uh, that message. And that leads us on nicely as I now want to hand over to one of our uh, cohort members, uh, Darren, who is still right in the thick of teaching and has some brilliant insights on what it's like to be part of Now Teach. So Darren, uh, welcome and thank you for being here. And I'll let you take it from here now. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Darren. Uh, just a bit of background to myself. I was a fund manager in the city for um, well, the last seven years of my career, but I worked in real estate for 22 years. Uh, I think as much as Lucy said, I ultimately I just got bored of my career. Um, towards the end, I was just doing the, the same thing over and over um, and just wanted a fresh challenge uh, and decided, I was, I was just saying earlier, I was sat here where you are at the moment, um, on a Now Teach webinar, wondering whether it's the right thing to do. Uh, so I did. Um, I quit. 
uh, much to my colleagues amazement and I started in September um, so I'm still in my first year of teacher training. Um, now teach were really good at uh, just giving me the confidence to do it and then also the support uh, when I first started and and really to help on finding which training program is appropriate. One thing I never really appreciated was how many different routes into teaching there are um, and now teach helpful actually and um, it's a bit of a shameless plug this but they were very um, helpful in finding the correct route into teaching for me. So I then started in September um, and I'm at I'm with the Harris Academy Trust I work in East Dulwich at an all boys school. Um, there's quite a high level of deprivation there. Uh, it's not an easy school. Um, but I've enjoyed it for the most part. Um, it's a lot harder than I ever thought it would be, um, but it is rewarding. And I think what Lucy said was right, being surrounded by teenagers all day is actually quite inspirational sometimes. Um, I, I, had a, I had a fairly rough day today, but but there's still every day you can take good bits out of it. Um, it does feel a bit of a roller coaster, but I I just feel that there's Im improvement there. So I, I the challenge has been hard, but I've really progressed. I've learned not to be. It's very hard being not very good at something when you've been very good at your career as I was after 22 years I'm sure you're all fairly decent at your careers as well but to go back to the beginning and not be very good it's hard but it does test your resistance um, I think on a positive side as much as I feel I've messed up quite a bit every day that I feel like I could improve I've learned, one, not to beat myself up too much. And secondly, um, you do get those amazing wins that I never, ever had in my previous career. And, you know, I've got a couple of year sevens who were really difficult when they entered secondary school. Now, I've got classes I enjoy teaching in, and you can see their minds and so on. And then even more, like year nine, which is supposed to be the hardest year and it is the hardest year in my experience you know they're taking their GCSE options now and um yeah quite a few of them are taking geography and I've been teaching them all year so you, you get you get some amazing wins it's, yeah as I said it's it's just hard not probably as Lucy said in the video really wanting to start something and, and improve and, and get good at something but I don't know that's probably me rambling on that's my history and where I'm at, at the moment and I've accepted a place at my school um for next year so it can't be all that bad and i'm looking forward to doing my early career teaching next year and in the years ahead and i i, I um yeah it's no regrets so far that's great thank you darren and thank you for sharing your story so it's really useful to hear about the experience firsthand especially for someone like yourself who has benefited from now teach support and has been able to thrive in the classroom as a teacher. Um, so now you've heard from Darren, I'm gonna speak um, a bit more about some of the logistical things and the types of things that Now Teach can help you with. So shortly we're gonna delve into the Q&A part of the session, uh, meaning that we will get to answer questions from you. Um, uh, but first, there's gonna be some questions that always come up. So I want to just preempt those and ensure that you're getting all that crucial information up top. So Darren, uh, just take a breather and then you and Carl are gonna speak um, to some of the questions that are coming through. So everybody on this call today, um, you'll be at a slightly different point in your thinking. So we understand that what you really need is a really bespoke approach to the support. And there are, um, but there are some things um, that everyone has in common. So. Uh, firstly, you'll be thinking, how do you become a teacher with Now Teach? So, um, first of all, just a quick overview of how we can support you into teaching and Now Teach. So, to reiterate, we don't run a teacher training programme. We support career changers as you transition to teaching and you remain part of the Now Teach uh, throughout your entire career as a teacher. Um, so, we do this in three ways. So, firstly, our career change specialist will support you uh, with your initial teacher training application. So whether that is advising you on the DfE apply service or helping you to secure interviews through our partners um, or coaching you on the interview process itself. Uh, Joe, Rachel and Wendy and the team 
are really well equipped to support people who are changing career at that kind of mid to later stage. Um, secondly, once you've secured a training place, our programme team support you during the first two years. Uh, that's your teacher training and your first year as a qualified teacher. So Carl, who's with us today, is part of that team. And I know he'll be more than happy to speak to what that looks like a bit later on. And thirdly, you also become part of the Now Teach network of hundreds of career changers. Um, they are there to share learning and experiences with you as you train and then on uh, for the rest of your career as a teacher. And I know Carl will agree that now teachers say this is one of the best aspects of what we do. It's the community of people who are doing or have done um, just what you're doing. So uh, the next question is always about what the process looks like. So there are two parts. So you have an eligibility check in our expression of interest form and then you complete the full registration by submitting a statement about your motivation to teach and your career. If it looks like we're the right fit to support you, we'll invite you to a consultation to talk more about your motivations to teach and some key competencies. There will be a consultation outcome and then, uh, then you're proceeding to the next steps, you'll be invited to join Now Teach. We then support you in securing a training place with a training provider, and then you're on to the start of the training itself. So on that, uh, what are the different training routes? So at a very basic level, there are two main types of training program. You get university or you get school based. With university based, you would uh, begin in a university setting. So you'd have things like lectures and seminars, and then you complete two block placements at schools. And then um, there's the school base. So with the school base, you would be in school and you would learn kind of on the job from day one. Um, you might step out of school for one day a week um, to go to a different learning environment, but you are based in one school for the majority of the year and you would have some time in another school for contrast. And there are also two types of qualifications associated with teacher training. So there's QTS, so qualified teacher status, um, is the qualification you require to teach in a school in England, and that's the key thing and the PGCE which is what lots of people have heard of um, and goes back quite a long time is an academic qualification and um, so you'll get that from a university-based route normally and um, you can also do it on a school-based route but it is not it's not compulsory and um, but the key things are that you can achieve QTS and become a teacher without a PGCE. Um, so our career change specialist will be more than happy to speak to you in more details about your options um, and also just discuss with you a bit more about how those options might match up with your specific uh, circumstances. So next would be, are you eligible? So our expression of interest form will check your eligibility for you. Uh, but just to highlight, there are some legal criteria for teacher training, which you have to meet. Everybody has to meet these. Um, so there's maths and there's English GCSE at C or above with an option to take an exam if you don't have them. Um, you need an undergraduate honours degree. And then there are further criteria for subject eligibility and it's variable depending on the training provider. But it's either an A level, a degree or significant relevant experience in your chosen subject area, which will be required. And if you do have overseas qualifications, you can apply to the government body called ENIC uh, for a statement of comparability. So um, they will check how your overseas qualifications uh, match up to um, UK qualifications. And um, so on that as well, actually, um, it's just to point out a quick note about subjects. So um, what subjects can you teach? So at Now Teach, we support trainees across subjects where there tends to be uh, more initial teacher training positions available. So our team can discuss which subject would be right choice for you uh, based on your experience, your interests and your qualifications. Um, there are shortages of teachers in particular subjects, um, including maths, physics, chemistry, modern foreign languages and computer science. And there are often more training options in those subjects and they do also attract a higher government bursary. Which um, leads on to kind of a crucial question, which I'm sure is on everybody's mind, is what financial support is available? So change of career is going to mean a change of income for most people. There are some government tax-free bursaries available. These vary and the higher bursaries are of course 
for shorter subjects. So up to £27,000 for subjects like maths, physics, chemistry and computing, uh, bringing in the highest bursaries. Again, when thinking about your skills and qualifications and your experience, it's worth discussing this with a career training specialist to see, you know, what the best fit all around is going to be for you. Um, all trainees do pay tuition fees for their training year, whether on a university or a school route, and um, student loans are available. So £9,250, the equivalent of a year of uni fees, uh, plus maintenance, maintenance loans are available for living costs, um, up to £12,000, um, but they are dependent on your household income. Once you gain QTS, you do enter the teacher salary scale. As a newly qualified teacher, you can expect to begin on a salary of at least £25,000 outside of London or £32,000 um, if you are in inner London. Okay, so now we're going to move on to your questions. So um, first off, I want to kind of bring Carl into the mix. Um, so Carl, it'd be really nice if you could introduce yourself and a bit about what you do at Now Teach as well. And you are on mute. <laughs> oh, thank you, Talia. Um, my name is Carl Newsom, and I work for Now Teach as a program manager. So I'm here to really sort of support uh, you on an unbiased level. So you, um, during your teacher training year, you will have your training provider, your mentor, and obviously your qualification provider. And then we're here as that extra support for you in terms of offering you opportunities for you to kind of develop your CPD and your knowledge of the education system, as well as uh, help you with ECT, um, interview preparation, even if you just want to pick up the phone and rant and rave, uh, but also there to celebrate your successes during your uh, teacher training year. That's great. Thank you very much. So we're going to go on to some of your questions. So um, one question we've got from Emma, which I'm going to answer just straight away is, I haven't applied yet, am I too late? And the answer to that is probably not. Um, there um, is likely places in your area um, we can help match you with so we definitely encourage you to still do that um, after this uh, webinar we are going to be we'll drop everybody a call just to see if they've got anything they want to discuss and um, anything that we can kind of help we can kind of help with um, so it might be uh, worth discussing your specific circumstances um, with us a kind of um, then or uh, booking a call with us in the future uh, but we are kind of getting to the to the end of the year now and um, so you would want to kind of be quite hasty about it but um we can definitely explore whether there's options for you in September and if there's not we can support you into uh, next to next academic year as well so we can help you there um great so I'm gonna um I'm just gonna start with a couple of questions here so um you know, um, so I think one um, a really kind of crucial question, um, and uh, Carl, it might be good for you to kind of um, start with this because I know that we've got a conference coming up, so you can talk a bit about that. Is like, you know, how will now he, now teach uh, prepare help you prepare during the summer, and also what are the other things you can do to sort of prepare for your teacher training over the summer? So, Carl, I'll go to you first. Oh, that's a great question. Um, what I'll go straight to what you can start doing to kind of boost your confidence. And I think this is the most important thing. Rather than looking at it as preparing for September, it's about boosting your confidence to kind of start channeling a new area. Um, and really, that's about you boosting your confidence in yourself. Uh, children and young people really respond to you being you. Um, yes, you do have a lesson to teach and objective to get through, but they do really kind of connect with who you are as a teacher and who you are as a person. So it's about you preparing for that and kind of being open and uh, adaptable. Um, your first year, especially in September, preparing for that is going to be um, a wave of information. So it's about kind of preparing yourself for that information. It's about kind of being open to making mistakes, laughing at yourself when you do make mistakes and kind of being prepared uh, and in that mind frame of wanting to kind of get better. 
um, with that said, uh, we do have an annual conference, which is on the 8th of July in London, which is an amazing conference. Um, we have some fabulous guest speakers who have a plethora of experience uh, in the education sector who would like to share their experience and different kind of practices and best effective ways for you to kind of manage your teaching. Um, and the whole thing is absolutely free and you'll be surrounded by like minded people like yourself, as well as experienced um, practitioners within the education sector to kind of support you with any question please remember throughout this whole process now teach is there to support you a hundred percent so don't feel afraid to kind of message or ring us or email us with a silly question what you might seem as silly however that could be an absolute blockage to support your kind of confidence teaching is all about confidence in order for you to kind of bring forward the skills that you have and get those children and young people to kind of look at things differently in a different way and that's all this is about is about you preparing your confidence for next september fantastic thank you darren do you have anything you want to add we've also had a, a related question that you may also want to kind of touch on here is how is about getting back into your subject if you haven't been working in a related area since school university so interested to know if you did any preparation for that and what you would advise um, yeah. oh darren you're very quiet for some reason can you, can you hear me, can you hear me uh, now? yeah yeah yeah, okay, yeah. I think preparing for the school year, the best advice I could give is to have uh, some time off and to, um, uh, if you can, between careers, to have at least, you know, three weeks, four weeks off, just some time to mentally prepare. Uh, I don't think, I think reading books about education, I really would not advise. There's plenty of time to do that in your training year. And I totally agree with what Carl said, you know, it's just about confidence and building up just realizing the reasons you want to teach and getting really mentally secure of why you're doing it. Um, I don't think reading lots and lots of books about things is, is really not gonna help uh, in, in my opinion. Um, and I I had time off, I went walking for a bit. I did, I traveled to a few countries. It was, it was lovely. I felt very relaxed when I went in. Um, and I think that's really important. You don't wanna go in stressed or thinking that this is gonna happen or that's gonna happen. Um, I suppose on subject knowledge, uh, yeah, I, I do geography. Um, I had no idea about anything to do with physical geography. I hadn't studied it for 25 years. Um, so I was very nervous going in. Um, I subsequently, I have learned now about plate tectonics and weather um, and the environments and climate change. Um, and I, I'll be honest that the stuff that I've learned, I didn't know that well. I teach better because as you learn about it, um, you learn, you kind of see it through their eyes. So if you're not that sure about it, I, I really wouldn't put that as an obstacle at all because you will learn about it. And, um, and actually because you break it down fairly simply because you're refreshing yourself, I, I find physical geography a lot easier. Um, when I talk about human geography, I, I don't teach it as well because I fall into the trap of thinking they know it all and I'm talking to an adult. So I, I really don't think, I think lack of subject knowledge, I would almost use as an advantage in some ways, as long as you've got the um, motivation. Fabulous, thank you. And Darren, I think this would be one uh, for you to, to answer. So this one's about a school-based route. So um, it's around, are you teaching alongside an existing teacher to start with so it might just be helpful to talk through what it what it's like um if you're in a school-based route so um how that how that kind of works um how you kind of get introduced into the classroom yeah i, I can see the benefits of both routes i know that's a yeah. bit fence sitting uh, i i <laughs> went i did um i did a schools-based route um i had immediately nine lessons per week to do right right away with no preparation or anything I, I was proper deep end um it was brutal it was hard um and i then met someone who'd done a university route about two months later and they were just starting to go into the classroom and i'd had all these lessons and all these i mean looking back now learning stories but it was just really hard um however i now i've got really good well, I say really good, good relationships with many of those students because I put the time in with them 
Um, and actually some of the university based people who are coming in now are finding it more challenging than me because they haven't met the children before and they haven't built those relationships or the classroom dynamics. So I don't know, I, I, I personally preferred the classroom, but it, it was just so hard for the first couple of months. Um, uh, but it, I just felt that short term pain it just makes it a bit easier now and has led to better rewards now. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's a really, it's a real like personal preference thing, isn't it? It's a real, um, which one, which one's going to work work best for you? And Darren, we've got one, I've got a question here that is specifically for you as well. So you've talked about all the kind of like joy you've got from uh, building those relationships with the kids and kind of all everything you've got out of your new career. But is there anything you miss from your previous career? Um, anything you know, the job, people, and the money, anything like that? that i miss i yeah. i oh yes i miss uh, i miss bonuses um <laughs> i miss that yeah. time. i miss like actually just having any sort of bonus or money um i don't I, I say that i mean i uh i miss um i miss time to go and have a coffee whenever i want um i miss uh i miss being able to pop out the office and not be uh, feel like I'm in some sort of military camp of directed time. Um, I feel uh, I, I miss the freedom and the flexibility that of my old my old life. Um, but uh, it, I certainly don't miss um, being in meetings with lots of adults. I don't miss people whispering on. I find teaching refreshing. I find the people fast. I find that you're learning things. I found my old career incredibly stale and I really, really don't miss that at all. But I, I sometimes wish I could just nip out for half an hour and take a breath. Uh, I think that's the uh, And Carl, I wonder if there's anything that you're kind of getting back from now, teachers that you speak to about kind of things that, um, you know, what are what are kind of like the biggest benefits that they're finding, especially kind of career changer with now teach as well. Is there anything that you kind of find that's coming through as like a theme, uh, things that people are finding really useful or refreshing or any kind of challenges that seem to be themes amongst the now teachers you work with? Great question. Um, I think the uh, the main thing that comes out of it is we get now teachers actually feeling relevant again. I think sometimes when now teachers or career changers have kind of reached the peak of their careers and they're starting to think of changing is because there doesn't seem to be a sense of relevancy, a, a sense of kind of passion with what they want to do anymore. So I think we always feel when we're speaking to now teachers that they actually feel like their experience is making an impact on society. And that's the biggest thing that I think is what teaching is all about, is having that impact, that kind of suggestion over young people's lives. And, you know, as much as we would like to teach them everything, our ultimate job is to uh, teach young children and young people into decent human beings. So I yeah. get this wonderful sense from now teachers that they really feel a sense of relevancy and that they are making an impact. Um, I would say the biggest challenge for most now teachers is that change of environment and kind of feeling a little bit like they're at the bottom of the pile again and then completely forgetting the reason why they're there and the reason why they're there is because they have a wealth of experience which is invaluable in the classroom. So, Dar Darren do you have a, a kind of a biggest challenge that you found like one thing that kind of stood out? Um yeah I think behavior was hard um dealing with kids who on the surface just don't want to learn um you go in thinking it, it, it's certainly no dead poet society you're not going in there with lots of kids that are all wanting to learn at the same level just the variety of children I found um quite surprising and I found quite difficult teaching different level ability classes um yeah that, I was going to ask a bit about behavior as well actually and um, kind of you know that's obviously something that comes up all, all the time um it's a question that lots of people ask like what is what is the behavior like um is it is it as bad as it's kind of uh, perceived uh, through the media and um 
you know what what kind of things are in place in schools to help with that and also kind of you know how that gets better over time as well yeah i mean it can, it can be really bad um but i think it all depends on the individual school's behavior policy yeah. and if you stick to the policy every school will have a different policy for a reason but if you stick to the policy and you stick to the rules then it will work in your favor and actually it can be managed um i think the whole don't smile till Christmas things nonsense. Um, actually, <laughs> I've, I've kind of, I feel, I feel just being kind. Once, once the kids know that you're kind and you care about them, and if that shines through, and if you genuinely do, and that hopefully all of you do care about children, otherwise you wouldn't be considering this. But if you do, that kid, kids pick up on that. And actually, I found behaviour a lot easier once they've put you in the box of someone who cares about them. Um, the vast majority are then okay. But I, I think that to begin with, behaviour is difficult. It's just establishing routines. Establish, working with the policy today, but um, it, by and large, it's, it's all right. And you can get on. With... I think we've kind of, Darren, you broke up a little bit uh, towards the end there. So we didn't quite catch that, but um, do you have, um, Carl, a question for you actually. So just um, skipping back to kind of the now teach side of things here. So um, is there a now teach time commitment um, and kind of what is the, what's the expectation there about what people will attend, what will they come to um, and what should they expect um, in return? From now teach, I'm hoping. Yes, what's the now teach time commitment? Are they committed to anything compulsory? Uh, it's nothing really compulsory, I would say. Yeah. We'd like to think that you would want to attend any kind of event or anything that we have available for you, just because I do know that it, what we have to offer you won't get from your training provider or your school. And what we will offer will really help you in your career and your understanding to build your skills. So there is no commitment, I think, well, a mandatory commitment. We hope that you'll want to commit because you're enjoying what's actually happening throughout the whole year. Uh, we say that the first year is pretty much where we are supporting you every step of the way. And then you get to ECT and we kind of like to step back a little bit and then we'll check in. Uh, for your first year and then your second year we, it's really down to sort of we hope that you've kind of transitioned to an amazing teacher and you would like to keep sort of keep in contact with us so that's how it really works we yeah. tend to, for sorry just to just to really make it clear uh, for 2023 and 24 we'll have uh, three network knowledge days which will be full days of um, learning and social so you'll get to have uh, some fantastic speakers that will talk about a range of things as well as a free lunch everybody loves a free <laughs> lunch as a teacher yeah. um, free coffee and things like that and also some real networking sessions which are designed for you to really get to uh, grips and know other people along the network and find different teachers in your teaching realm uh, and then we also have an annual conference and then we'll have a couple each uh, throughout the year of what we call surgeries where we have a specific speaker who's absolutely amazing called Carl Poupe who I always get confused with myself because uh, it's both Carl with a K and he will be very specific in terms of these surgeries in terms uh, of how to support you even further and they'll be online and again the whole service is free I cannot stress to you that the whole service is funded and free if i was a teacher now i would have absolutely loved the service in order to get a second opinion a third opinion on what my process would have been yeah absolutely and i know that that with the network knowledge days and the conference things like that and the social aspect of it it's really about that kind of connecting with other career changes because the experience is quite unique really um it's not going to be the same as somebody who is 22 straight out of university and this is their first job it's kind of a it's a different beast and I know that people find that really useful and uh Carl I know that you and the other program managers you're always on hand always supporting someone because there's always kind of unique challenges and questions that people have um you know in their um, whilst they're training to teach so um, and you guys are kind of a wealth of knowledge uh, that you can't really get anywhere else. <laughs> so um, we're getting so there. We're getting there. 
<laughs> yeah, well, you definitely are. So, um, so that's always great as well. And we get loads of feedback that that is just so helpful. And I think that having that kind of community um, is really important when you're kind of embarking on a new challenge, especially one like teaching, which can, um, you know, it is challenging. You're on your own in the classroom a lot, and it's nice to have kind of other adults to kind of share experiences with things like that. So, um, I know that that's all kind of. Um, really really good so um Carl so I'm gonna put throw this one to you this question actually so it's a question about how many hours uh, people teach a week so in your experience kind of talking to your now teachers um what's kind of the what's like a timetable like for a now teacher do you think oh goodness um it really does depend what kind of contract you're on whether you're a full-time teacher trainee or a part-time teacher trainee um, it will also vary in terms of the subjects that you might do. So in the first term, you might do six or seven hours and you'll do a lot of shadowing. Um, and the second term, they might uh, upgrade that. And the third term, they might upgrade that altogether. Um, also, you've got to keep in mind that you'll also be doing some college days or some um, sessions to do your QTS work and your PGCE work. So it can be quite jam-packed so your weekends really are uh, time to rest or catch up however with this day and age in terms of the economic climate some people might need to work so it's just about being really clever with your time I always say to my now teachers is do a little bit each day to chip away of what you need to achieve so it's not so overwhelming at the end of you know before a deadline so just a little something every day and you re will really achieve it will then be quite different when you go into your ect year which will be classed as a proper teaching role but with extra support and some places with a full-time role you could be teaching up to 21 and a half maybe 22 hours a week um your contract will be 37.5 hours with additional needs of the business but 21 hours contact time and then you might have uh, the rest of the time will be seen as planning uh, and other needs of the business. Um, I'm actually putting together my third school culture uh, episode. We're actually talking about FTs and breaking that down in terms of 0.5 and 0.6. So that will be dependent on what you're actually teaching. But again, you wouldn't get any of this if you don't talk join now teach. So <laughs> if you join us, you'll get to know a little bit more. <laughs> Uh, Darren, um, we've had a question directly to you. Uh, so what life professional skills did you bring as a late entry teacher that first career teachers perhaps lacked that made you feel more valued? Um, the kids pretty much sussed that I was a career mover. After, they probably sussed straight away, but they admitted it a few months in. Um, so I talk about my previous career quite a bit and the kids like it. I think as long as I don't drone on and they do like um, it's, it's particularly if I apply things to money, they, they love economic sense of it. I go, why am I learning this? You go, well, you could go and do this job or you could earn this money. This is the career path you could go and do. And I do find coming from a different angle to some of the early career, you know, straight out of uni is that actually everything's got an application that you're learning. The relevance is really important. I'm not, um, I'm not sit standing there going, we're just learning for learning's sake and isn't it all wonderful? No, 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 you're learning this because you could go do this, this and this. And I met someone who did this, this and this and kids love that. And they suddenly go, all right, okay, well, that's, that makes sense to me. Therefore, I will do it. Um, and then I just wanted to add one thing, actually. One of my biggest fears was the teachers themselves before I went in. Um, yeah. and just coming as a career changer, what they'd be like. And I'd only ever worked in the private sector all my life and I had friends who were in the public sector, but I had all my conceived ideas about the public sector and what type of people I'd be meeting. And it, it, I'm pleased to say, you know, they're lovely. Like teachers are genuinely lovely people. I haven't met a difficult person yet, certainly compared to my last job. Uh, teachers are they're all there to help you. Um, yeah, I mean, you'll prefer some than others, but by and large, they're genuinely nice people. And that was a really pleasant surprise um coming from a different career where if you work in capitalism you'll know obviously that yeah you know, there's winners and losers in in teaching it's it's very different Every, everyone wants you to do well yeah for sure i always uh, i also i career changed in the other direction so i used to be a teacher and then i, I 
career change out, out of it. But um, I always say I'd nev I've never laughed as much as when I was you know, teaching, either with the kids or just with the other staff. Like it's just, there's just always something that's funny um, happening. Like it was a generally quite buoyant and, and enjoyable environment, even if it was, you know, really, really challenging. Um, and speaking of um, schools, actually, so we have had a question about can we help arrange the school visits? So I can talk to this one. Uh, can we? Can you help with school visits for some insight into teaching before applying? So uh, yes, actually, uh, we probably can. Um, it's the um, it's really variable across the country, so it's just really worth you speaking to someone about where you are, um, what kind of experience you want to get, and the schools around you and we can kind of help uh, we can kind of help you either approach a school or kind of work out what's going to be best for you so um when we ring you after this um webinar it's probably worth just uh raising that and we'll, we'll work we'll work it out from there um so yeah um so any anything like that we can definitely help with um I saw a question a little bit earlier about whether you can apply for subjects that aren't on our website so um, you can apply to teach in whatever subjects you want, but um, we support the subjects that are on our website and um, they're the shortest subjects and they're the ones that kind of are high priority. Um, and uh, we're trying to get as many teachers of those subjects into schools as possible. Um, and that's part of our mission as a charity as well. Um, so um, that's if you want kind of support with that, then that's what we do. Um, same goes for primary. We, do, we don't uh, support primary teachers at this time. Um, it is just secondary schools. Um, so just in case that was unclear for anyone. Um, OK, so um, I think we can kind of, kind of going to look to uh, wrap up. We have made really good time and we are a little bit early um, but we seem to have got through um, all the questions there. And like I said, we will give everybody a call after um, to see how how you're getting on. Um, so um, in a minute, um, you'll see a poll and that will pop up on your screen. Um, so if you just complete that, uh, just while I reiterate a couple of things. Um, Oh. Um, so our specialist team really are here to help. Um, we will be following up with everybody with a phone call following the webinar. And um, so do you have further questions ready? And uh, do you just make sure you draw upon extensive knowledge of our specialists and fill out our uh, registration form on the website and we can go uh, from there. So lastly, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we hope you found it informative. I'm sure it was great to hear from Carl and Darren, whose first hand experience really is invaluable so thank you very much and have a good rest of your evening